One of the keys to being preeminent is um, you stop uh, being obsessed with your profession or with the case and you fall in love with the client, their interests, their needs, and you care deeply about making a profound difference in the quality of their life. If you know that you serve better, you care better, you advocate better, you protect better, you extol better, you prepare better you prevail better, you can't allow them to choose a competitor, not because you want your competitor uh, to get the business, but because you know that the client will be deserved. The key to it is uh, that you shift a bunch of your attitudes. The first attitude is you guide them to do to take actions that are absolutely going to get them the best outcome, and you tell them the reasons why, and you don't let them be tentative, and you assert yourself you do not wait for money to change hands to start adding monstrous value. Another element of preeminence is a hopefulness that that um, that exists and and flourishes in your heart for and about the client. I'm just giving you high points, but this hopefulness is a vision of a better tomorrow because you were in their life. You 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 have to make sure that every time you interact with them, for any reason, on the phone, in person a free consult, a preparation, no matter how the case goes, no matter how their body goes, that you make them better off because you were in that, their life in that point of time. And it's a constant contribution. You are a creator of profound value for them, and you have to know what value means to them, not to you. So it requires you to empathize, appreciate, respect, uh, understand, and carefully observe their values, how they see life, their life. You use future pacing. Future pacing is the process of taking, in this case, your client into the future and projecting to them how much better off it'll be, or if it's traumatic and, and horrific, how, how much you're going to do to make the suffering as minimal or the, or the economics as as covered and you want to be able to take them into the future so they can see a greater possibility and again greater is relative i'd suggest that in many of the situations that your your um clients readers uh, colleagues are involved in you know there's a lot of tragedy there's a lot of sadness i mean it's probably the best of of a bad situation type of an outcome but they've got to be able to to, to again this hopefulness ties to it. Uh, well, I'll start with what I presume is a way of natural thinking by a trial attorney. Uh, they don't really go into a trial thinking, okay, I'm going to do whatever happens and I'm not really going to, I'm not going to really have a game plan. Theoretically, if they're, if they're good or masterful or world-class or, or preeminent, they know exactly where they're trying to get to and every move they've already thought out, theoretically, they know what their outcome is, whether it's a, a prevailing in front of a jury or semi-prevailing. And, but they know where they're trying to get every move to, sort of like masterful chess. Tactic is just a bunch of activities that are uh, designed to uh, move forward or make some kind of a positive impact. But tactics should never be used for any other purpose but to deploy the strategy. Uh, if you look at at leverage, I've spent my whole life in the world of upside leverage, performance enhancement, maximizing and multiplying the outcome of time, effort, uh, communication, access to market, uh, movement, everything. You see that literally you change your strategy, you change your results. Uh, I, I would shudder to tell you that uh, you know preparation is certainly the the progenitor of great strategy, but strategy cannot be masterfully uh, achieved until and unless you have a context of knowing uh, not everything that's possible, but some of the scope of what's possible. I learned, I was very lucky when I when I got started, and you, and you probably know, Cindy, I've been involved in 
465 industries, not businesses. And when you look at that kind of a breadth of, of possibility, you see ways of thinking, strategy, reaching markets, communicating, things like that. I've also, and this will be very relevant to your readers, that if you multiply 5, 10, 15 impact points, 10, 15% better, the cumulative effect is not 10 or 15%. It becomes hundreds or thousands of percent. And I learned how to look and break everything down into its performance processes, sub-processes, analyze, quantify, evaluate them. And when you do that, you see enormous variation. And variation is really inefficiency. And when you see the, the amazing differential of doing things one way or the other, it's amazing. But when you see how much more is possible, Cindy, from an action, from an opportunity, from an effort, uh, it, it, it expands your horizon. Now, the problem with most people who are successful is they don't question whether the level of success they're enjoying is minimal or maximum, is or optimal. In other words, if somebody spends, I don't know, ten grand, twenty grand, five thousand on on TV or radio, or a billboard or whatever singular uh, source, most of them default to, and it makes them a good living. They're happy. I I was trained in the world that said that that uh, most most effort is dramatically underperforming its potential. We we I've been trained to test and question three things. Number one, singularity of access to the market. That's probably the most inefficient way to reach a market. We teach, uh, we, you know, I used to do a lot of seminars, and we taught the difference between what's called the diving board theory of, of business generation and the power parthenon. The diving board is a graphic metaphor that dem- it's really meant to look like a diving board, and it's, if you think about somebody who builds a diving board and on a water hole in the country and they use a stump and put a plank on it. That's how most businesses, and I dare say most uh, trial lawyers' businesses are driven. They've got you know, a lot of TV they run or a lot of billboards they run or radio they run, and that's probably the, if not the singular, the predominant source. And as long as it brings in a profit that meaningfully um, exceeds the cost, they're reasonably happy, although you can test and analyze and evaluate. And the first thing is, you know, you can usually make a, a, a source produce many times more for the same or less cost. Um, most people are talking about power parthenon. We're talking about the uh, diving board. So most people have most of their business, their revenue, their clientele emanating from one activity. And yet when I go and look at groups and I ask them how much of their business comes from referrals, most anybody that does anything well in a profession, in, in litigation, I would think, uh, and personal injury, it's got to be somewhere between 10 and 100% of the business comes from referral. And I'll ask people to tell me what the percentage is and to estimate what the aggregate dollars that percentage esti- uh, represents, and it depends on the business. And in your field, it might be a million dollars a year from referrals, might be half, might be 10, depends on the size of the firm or the or the cases, but then I'll ask people, okay, how many people who can confirm that a, a reasonable portion or all their business comes from referral or word of mouth have in place at least one formalized, systematized, strategic, standardized referral generating process? And almost no no one has that. Some have one. Then we'll say two. Very few have two. We'll say three. Almost nobody has three. Well, over the course of my life, because I've worked in 465 industries, not businesses, we have identified 93 separate referral-generating stratagems, strategies that companies have used either significantly or entirely to drive their whole business. We found 93 different ways. The thing about a referral-generated prospect that converts to a client, number one, they convert faster. Number two, they not that they negotiate, but I don't know if clients negotiate on the fees or not. They negotiate less. They're more compliant. They're more enjoyable. They're more profitable. It costs you nothing other than maybe a thank you gift if it's if it's uh, appropriate from a um, um, professional standpoint to the referring either past client or source. It, they usually are bigger cases. They. You know, they refer more people. Everything about it is more pleasant, and yet most people spend all their time, their money, their effort, 
on inefficient advertising. And even that, they don't really carefully evaluate alternative media, alternative access, alternative ways to express it. We've tested everything from the way you express the media to how you engage people when they call in to the follow-up. And all those factors can enhance or depress the, you know, the result, the conversion, the show up, the, 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 um, the, the client saying, I want you. And when you're talking about cases that probably worst case are worth five or $10,000 to the firm and best case could be worth hundreds of thousands or millions and be a spawning ground of, of incredible of, of future flow of, of uh, referrals, you really have to look at what you're doing from a much more analytical and a much more expansive and a much more, I'm going to use the word scientific, but marketing strategic and sophisticated manner, if that makes sense. It frustrates me that people accept a fraction of a fraction of the outcome, the result, the effort from a, first of all, from a career, if they've spent, uh, in Lord knows how much in college and then how much post-college, and if they really are passionate and they really are um, are committed advocates for the betterment of their client. They're not just crass, um, you know, crass, avaricious people trying to look at everybody as a, as a, uh, a quick, down and dirty uh, settlement. If they're really trying to be these, these extraordinary advocates and they really want to be strategic and they really want to maximize their ability to add enormous value to the rest of the life and to the you know, to the trauma that's been inflicted to their client, I think the things we talked about could be very helpful.